In this video, we're going to be covering the railing tool. Now, the railing tools become very sophisticated, and what's great about it is it's able to associate, associate itself with slabs and stairs so that when the stairs or the slabs are updated, the railing is as well. So let's start by just using the magic wand, selecting this edge here, and that throws in a handrail on that outer edge, and we can do same thing there, although we probably don't want a handrail there. Let's go ahead and just put it in now and we'll see how we can change it. So this handrail out here, let's go into the properties. And so first of all, we want to modify our segment. Our segment, let's make it 42 inches tall. And from the reference line, we're going to be two inches, and we don't know which side it is yet, so we'll just get started here. So that handrail is, that's a handrail. This is a top rail. We don't have a top rail yet. That's why nothing's highlighted. If we want to add a top rail, we click right there. That goes to our segment height at three foot six. If I change this to five feet, you can see that top rail is always part of the segment. So we'll put this at 3.5 again. This handrail we have at three feet and want it to be the inside of the main rail by let's say two inches. So top rail, handrail. When we select the top rail, that's the segment, top rail, handrail top rail. We can choose our profile. This one just gives us a square and round. This one gives us a nice shape. This one we can import any complex profile we want. Then we have this rail 23 which gives us plenty of good options. Let's use this one. Give it a stainless steel. Uh, these are some clip plates. We'll take those off for now. We'll, we may add those back in later. Um, and now when we look at the handrail, here's our, here's our top rail, here's our handrail. We select the handrail, it's at three feet, it's two inches in from the main rail, and here's our shape. Again, we can use the four different shapes, different shapes here, the rail built in, pig ear or custom. Again, we'll make this stainless steel and we'll do a hollow tube, two inches round, um, 0.125 inch wall. And there's our handrail. Now, if we look here, this is the railing and it's to the outside of the stair. So we want to switch this to be the inside of the stair. So this just this puts it in the center of the reference line left and right. We'll go right there. Notice it's giving us different line types for uh, below and above the break. Another interesting part of this story is that if we modify the underlying stair boundary, the railing follows. So that's super great. Go back into this and we can add some rails. Um, let's hit plus. And there's a, a rail now. And let's put it at four inches from the bottom. We'll align it to the main rail system. We're going to use profile rail, use a square bottom, rail 23, hollow tube, we'll do one inch, 
yeah, 0.75 inches and one and a quarter inches. And stainless steel. We can roll it. We can eighth inch wall. Hit OK. 3D. Now we have a bottom rail. And we just keep doing this. So we could add another rail. If we chose, we could put another rail in here and do the same thing. Now let's do some balusters. Hit plus. And so this is going to be a repeating pattern. We can do below. So there's one set of balusters that go from the bottom to the top. And now we can control some of these dimensions. So equally distribute the pattern to 3.875 inches. And let's just do railing post one inch. I'll go over here. We'll test that. And let's hit OK. And that is particularly ugly, but it did what we wanted. So let's. Talk to it some more. We want to do square one inch. Steel. Okay, that's a little better. We have this little gap here, so let's figure out why. I think we let's try going zero there. These are the horizontal offsets from the first tread and the last tread, so we'll not mess with that. So this is zero to the top of the rail. We need to manually set this such that <clears throat> comes just below that railing. And you can kind of see there's a little trial and error here, but the concept is there. Um, let's do some inner posts. I don't understand. Back that. So the posts, these are inner posts and these are the posts. So we want Let's do a prof profiled post. Oh, that's what that means. We want a railing post. Do a two and a quarter inch. Steel. That's if we want connectors at the bottom. So 
So now that's putting a post at every junction. I think that'll hold the post down. May, let's see if it'll let us run the post through. We want to run the post through, we use a negative number, and that post extends up and beyond. And here's the node. So this is an interesting choice here. Um, let's see if we can figure this out. So we can have a post at each point. Uh, let's try four inches out and see what that does. So that puts in two posts. Notice these posts got flipped. This one needs to extend down. Here we can put three. One in the corner. So I like just in the corner. And so these different options need to kind of be explored. This one's probably a good one. This puts it up two inches. As I was trying to get it to not break on the tread itself. Now it's pushed them all up onto the step, which is great. Here are our connectors, um, how we want it to work. Here are ends. So let's do this end. Put a sphere on the end. Lots of choice. In component profiled. We don't want profile one or end. Let's just do that one. And it curled this one down. So we'd actually want to put a circle on there. So instead of doing a circle, we actually want to do this one. Then we'd use the same dimensions. And there we go. And it may not even be necessary to put that on, but it gives you an idea of what's possible. All right, so now let's edit this. And what we can do here So let's not go into edit mode quite yet. Let's just keep this up. So reset the custom nodes. Got our posts essentially where we want. We could put panels in. There's different types of panels. So these would be used instead of balusters. Let's take out those balusters. Let's put a panel in. Not very impressive. So we want the panel to be, let's say, glass. Thing. 
No, we'll do plywood center frame. We'll do stainless steel. Fixings, we'll do steel. And so that put in our plywood panels, and then we can edit those panel offsets. I have to play around with this a little bit more to get full control over it. So here are the clips. Okay, I see that clips to the handrail, and th this frame's a little too. So this frame, like this. Make this one inch. Those are the offsets. Quarter, two and a half. So, some playing around with this would probably be necessary. There's the offset at the top. Offset at the bottom. The end offsets, let's put three inches in here. Three inches in here. So this, this is updating pretty nicely. And so now we may want to add a post. the center inch and a half by inch and a half a lot of settings here and Post that inner post. I'd like to run that all the way top. There we go. The segment bottom. And now it put a post in the middle and broke up the panels. For us. So there's a lot of really great features here, and it's just a matter of taking the time to fiddle around with them until you understand them. We're now getting the what they're calling the fixings, the little brackets, these inner posts. Uh, when it's purple, it's because it doesn't have material associated with it. So let's get this to be stainless steel. Fixings aren't required. Now that's showing up. Uh, the handrail fixings needs stainless steel. Very, very sophisticated stuff. And, you know, again, moving the stair updates this whole railing. So let's hide some of this stuff. I want to get to that railing. So now let's see what we can do in the edit mode. In the edit mode, we can begin to control each one of these elements. So 
So individually controlling these elements becomes possible when you're in edit mode. For example, let's see, I want to edit So I can independently start manipulating all these elements. And let's see if I want to adjust. So the, the top rail and have these different ends. I can make it square. There, so now we made it square, we eased it up, started leveling it out sooner. And so I don't need to be in edit mode, just lets me adjust the dimensions, but I really just want to be in the dialog. Bottom rail is just a blunt end. It looks like we might have two handrails, so you got to be careful. I notice that happens sometimes. Make sure we just have one. So there you go. So that's how we control all of those. We need to move this handrail out. That was moving the entire edge. And let's see if we go into edit mode. Each of these elements can be freely manipulated, although it's kind of complicated. I imagine doing it in section or elevation would be a good idea. And then these posts here. I'm not sure where that clip's coming from. Must be the inner post. Yeah, so there's two posts here. So when I I split this one, so it's one foot off of the grid, and select that one and subtract it. Move this one. Back to center. And that. And 
Not sure why where that clip's coming from. I have to do some research on that because I don't see it here. There it is. It's on the bottom rail. If I just turn that off for those. Okay. Anyways, that's a lot of fun. Very interesting. Um, I need to get a little bit better at it, but I think it's a, a great start and it gives you some ideas of how to make this all work. So have some fun with it, play around, and let me know what you learn.